In this video, I'll be showing you how to move material from Schoology over to Canvas using an export and import process. I'm going to use the drop-down menu in Schoology here and go over to my courses on the far right. Here I'm going to click on Archive to get at my previous courses. In this case, the course I'm going to move will be from Spring 2021. course looks like this. To begin the process of setting it up for export and import, I'm going to go to the Options menu here at essentially the home page, and I'm going to save the course to my resources. I'm going to say no folder. I'm just going to send the whole thing over this way. Leave the default settings. It will tell me it's a large operation and this will take time. The more material I have in my course, the longer it will take. This particular course does not have a lot of material, so by the time I switch over to transfer, it says it's complete. If it's not complete, I can click on refresh and uh, once it's complete, I'll see that it's complete here. At this point, I've got it over in my resources. So I'm going to go to resources. It's just a folder in resources right here. I haven't yet exported it. Here in resources, there's a small square here, which opens up the export option. A little bit subtle. Once here, I have to tell it what I want to export. The menu could be quite long depending on how many things you've stored in your resources. But what I want is this item right here. These are the individual pieces. I want the whole course, the whole folder. So I'm going to click on that. It'll produce an IMSCC file. I'll click on export. And this won't actually technically export the file. It's going to generate the file and put it in my resource area. And here you can see it is taking a little bit longer to produce this file. It says pending. So I'll wait a bit and then I'll click refresh and see if it's still pending. It is. It's still working on producing the file that I will eventually export. Let's give it another go. It's now complete. If it's a large course, this could take quite a while before you see the complete. This isn't that large a course. Now I can actually download the export package. So as I say, it's a little subtle, but this is where I finally am able to download it. Turns out it's a 7.9 megabyte file. Downloading it will take some time depending on your internet connection. And so the file is now getting downloaded. With that done, it's now in either your download folder or your desktop or wherever you set downloads to appear. I'm now going to switch over to Canvas and import that file into my sandbox. I'm going to borrow my sandbox demonstrator. You should probably import it into the actual course that you're planning to teach. I'm going to be going all the way down to the bottom here to Settings. Notice this is separately scrolling from the page. So I'll use this. I have to be on top of this area and then scroll down. I'll get to Settings. The Import button might appear on the right side, but in my case, because my screen is a little narrow, it's down at the bottom import course content. So I'll go to import course content. Here I will tell it I'm importing a common cartridge 1.0 package. There are other options, but that's the option I want. I'll click on browse, go to my desktop, that's where the file is. There's the file, the ims.cc you know, file. Uh, you can't see the whole thing, but all I'm doing is clicking on open over here. I'm going to tell it I want all content. I'm going to leave everything else unchecked and I'm going to click on import. This will take some time because I'm now uploading that 7.9 megabyte file into Canvas. Note that I did not import my assessment as new quizzes. 
I recommend using classic quizzes until a series of different issues are worked out for the new quizzes. There are uh, the new quizzes work. They have some new capabilities, but there are some caveats. One is that when you have an essay question, the uh, Canvas does not pop a notification to your to-do list that you have a quiz submitted with an assessment question that you need to grade. You have to go into those uh, using SpeedGrader and grade those individually and you will have no notification that they've arrived. If all your quizzes are arriving on the same day, no problem. Uh, there's some other issues like uh, partial credit that don't yet calculate correctly and a few others. Now that the it's uploaded the file, it's uploaded the 7.9 megabyte file, it's now installing that file into my course. So it's a two-step process. Upload and then essentially unpacking the file and installing it in the, uh, the various places. Here too there are some caveats. There will be some errors. And the things that Schoology calls pages will come across as static HTML files in because of the IMSCC format limitations. There are six issues. Um, the uh, there's some issues with one of the quiz questions, and there are some links that are probably broken. And I can go look at those by uh, opening these in new tabs. Uh, but you'll see probably different errors. There's, you still have a good bit of cleanup that you'll have to do. But let me first show you what came over. What used to be, if you go back and look at my course, what used to be folders has now become modules here inside Canvas. So if I go to my modules, you'll see that that which used to be folders is now in modules. Some of my assignments have made it over. Some of the links have made it over. Uh, some come in published, some unpublished. It doesn't matter. Currently, my whole sandbox is unpublished. You can see that way at the bottom of the home page. The whole thing is unpublished. So nobody can actually see this. So I have, can now sit here and clean this up. But one of the things that will have been lost is, see this welcome to SC11? That's now been turned into a text HTML file. And this can't be edited. It's just an HTML file. So what I'm, and the picture is, is uh, stuck in here too. I'm going to do a couple steps. One, I'm going to go ahead and save this image out and dump it down onto my desktop. I'm going to, I just saved that. It's uh, off screen, but I did a right click, save. So right click and I saved that image. You'll see why in a moment. Then I'm going to grab all this text. I can't edit that text, and I'll undoubtedly want to edit that text. It's a bit old. And I'll go to Pages, and I'll set up a new page. And I'll come here, and I'll simply paste the text in. I did a Control-V paste. I know it looks fast, but I'm doing a copy and paste. A Control-X cut, or sorry, Control-C copy, or on your Mac, a Command-C copy, and a Command-V paste. Those are the 1984 Apple interface guidelines that we've had well, coming up on almost 40 years. That picture that I saved, I'm going to go ahead now and bring that picture up from my uh, desktop. Or I could change it. but uh, And it's always a good idea to uh, give it alt text. That helps with the uh, accessibility issues. If there are accessibility issues on a page, they'll appear here in the accessibility checker. Uh, my page will need a uh, title. Welcome to Ethnobotany was the original title of the page. But now it's editable. It's in an editable format. And I can, uh, I'll save and publish that page. So it's now a page. I really want that to be a page. Let me go back to modules. Because these, A, I can't edit this, this one here can't be edited. And B, it won't display very well on a mobile device. Whereas pages will reformat to be uh, a 
reformat to a mobile device. So I'll go back to modules now. I want to replace this, so I'll go to plus. I did it a bit fast. There's a plus sign on the right side. Click on that. Up here, I'll tell it I'm adding a page to my module. There's my new page, and I'll add that item. Now, this one here, uh, sorry, the one that was the link up here, I'm going to drop that. Uh, let's drop this guy out. Just delete it. I don't need it anymore. Remove. This is an external link off to another web page. Um, I won't need that one either because there's a calendar over on the right side the students will have. And there's a syllabus now over here. But I will have to move this material into the syllabus. I've got material there that will need to go here. The syllabus currently is blank because Schoology doesn't have syllabuses. But this is college. We have syllabuses in Canvas. So there are. there's going to be a good bit of cleanup work. There's no way around it. There's my page, my ethnobotany page. It's now sitting in my module. It's not in the right place, so I'll put it in the right place. I'll start working on my syllabus. I'll pop that open into a new window. I'll grab some of the pieces I want from my syllabus. I'm going to do again the command uh, C or control C copy. Come back over here to my syllabus in Canvas. Edit that. Uh, click here. Paste that in. And again, it'll need some cleaning up. But I'll update my syllabus. And now I've copied that material over too. So there'll be some cleanup work that has to be done. And come back down to modules. I don't need this one anymore. There'll be dates I have to clean up on assignments. These are dates I typed in manually, so they're going to need altering too to reflect the current year. Those are dates in 2021. Uh, these tests aren't dated yet, so I'll have to go in. The tests, some of them may have uh, may have some questions that need editing now, so I'll need to check my questions. Pictures have come across, questions have come across. I can check and see, yeah, it's still multiple choice. Uh, it now has, that's the correct answer. So it's brought it over with the correct answer. Multiple choice comes across really clean. Uh, will be the uh, Santa vector. But uh, these red boxes are new. They can't be filled in because they don't exist in Schoology. This is where I put what the student will see if they choose this answer. And so I can explain, no, this is a cyanobacteria uh, that we have here on Pompeii and across Micronesia. And so there are capabilities in Canvas that just don't exist in Schoology. And so I'll probably want to clean some of those up. Uh, a few other questions um, are probably going to have some issues. This one came across OK. It's fill in the blank still. And it brought over all of the correct answers. There are a lot of correct answers for that particular question, but it came across nice and clean. So I've got all of that material there. I do the rubrics that I would have used in my last course, they don't come across. Uh, but here, I'm going to rebuild this from scratch anyway, because I'm going to use the find, I'm going to go to outcomes and use the find button and go into the account standards, College of Micronesia, scroll down to the math, science, science, MSSC, SC, and scroll down till I get to my, see my course. See somewhere oh yeah, off the bottom. It's at the bottom. My course happens to be. And I'm going to import that outcome. They're already in there. Your outcomes are already here. I'm going to find another one. This time at least I don't have to scroll all the way down. It's already there. I'm going to bring across both of my outcomes into my course because here in Schoology, those are now from the Institutional Bank. They're already in there. If your course outcomes aren't in there, let me know. Uh, these are the course outcomes as of May 2021. If an outline was updated after May 2021, I don't have the updated outcomes yet, and I need those. With them, I can update the uh, 
this bank of outcomes. Now I'll go ahead and build rubrics. So these are things you're going to have to do from scratch. I don't need that criterion. I'm going to find an outcome. I've already got my outcomes. They've already got their points attached. Those are already in the system. Yours are too. If I want, I can have one, two. I can also have criteria. There's lots of things. But th my point is, there's still going to be a good bit of scratch material to do. But there's the beginning of a, of a rubric. I'll give it some, a name. And I can add other criteria to the rubric, other points to the rubric. When I'm done, I can just say, well, create the rubric. And now I have a rubric with the outcomes. And I can attach that to an assignment. Uh, I can go to assignments. My assignments currently, a few of the assignments, have, they're here. They've come across with the dates from the prior term. But if I want to attach a rubric to uh, one of these, I obviously I can edit it. But the rubric actually gets attached right here. So I'm going to click on rubric, find a rubric. I'm going to tell it uh, I've got to go down to my course. I've got the SC115. There's both two of those guys are there. Three rubrics. Oh, I'm in my sandbox. <laughs> That's the one I just built. I forgot I'm working in my sandbox. Use this rubric. I'm going to click on the pencil. There'll be a warning when the course is running. If you've used the rubric, just say OK. Um, if you click the pencil. Because I want to use this rubric for assignment grading in my class. And then I'll update the rubric. I'm going to have to change the points to match because I want it to grade, so it now grades the assignment. So now my rubric will grade the assignment. When the assignment gets submitted, I'll be able to mark it with the rubric, and the points will automatically flow into the grade book. I know that's a lot, but there's a good bit of cleanup. There's always an ongoing debate as to whether or not it's better to export and import and clean up, or just simply build from scratch because there are so many new capabilities here in Canvas. Um, and you're going to have to rebuild your rubrics. In any case, so if you're a rubric heavy course, there's going to be some pretty heavy lifting anyway on building rubrics. Um, but whatever way you do it, whether you build from scratch or you uh, export and import, um, this particular path, the latter path, has been outlined in this video. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope this helps. Uh, if you do ask questions if you have any questions.